know, the midterm elections used to be like boring, didn't they? Now it's like the hottest thing, but the key is you have to go out to vote. Because in a sense, I am on the ticket. Republican, baby, get this bitch right. We gotta win. USA! USA! Well, that's a long line. If a large number of minorities come out and vote, it will change who is in office. We're heading to friendly territory. Are you a voter? There is a real chance that we don't win. If you want more caravans and more crime, vote Democrat. I think it's an invasion. It's so important to secure the border. We need a wall. We are the voice for every citizen who has ever been overlooked. We are sick and tired of being put behind. We're not going to take it anymore. of rural Idahoans are uninsured. People are gonna have to drive, you know, an hour and a half to the nearest spot to get care. There's this huge ripple effect that would happen if you're closing these rural hospitals. It's just right up here. Not only is care gonna be less accessible, but you're not gonna be able to maintain a community without a hospital there. I think I see a vote yes on two sign up there, so we're heading to friendly territory. Hey, how's it going? Good. We're out talking to voters about Proposition 2. Are you familiar with it? I actually am not. Are you a voter here? Yes. Oh, awesome. So by voting yes on Proposition 2, we're going to bring back 400 million of our federal tax dollars to pay for those people to be able to get health insurance. What do you think? We need that. We need that, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So have you heard about um, Prop 2, Medicaid expansion? Yes and no. Were you planning on voting in the upcoming election? I already have. Do you mind telling me how you voted on Prop 2? That's my business. Okay, it's your business. All right. I think anger at Donald Trump got people to pay attention to politics, perhaps. But I think it's more at the local level feeling like, God, what the hell are we doing in Idaho? Were you angry? Uh, yeah, I was. I'm a pediatric occupational therapist. The day after the election, I had an 11-year-old with cerebral palsy crying to me about why is my president-elect making fun of people with disabilities like me? So I was pissed. So I think people are paying attention to politics more now than, than they have in my lifetime. I certainly am. We decided like, well, let's go stumping for Medicaid in Idaho, you know? So we painted this camper green and I was just like, oh my God, people are gonna throw like Molotov cocktails at us out there. Cause it's so conservative here. Right. Yeah, and I, uh, and I keep in my car on my rear view mirror, my I voted sticker up from that election. But that drives me because the day after I was pissed and depressed, but I said like, I'm, this is not the world that I want to live in. This is the end of the wall. The theoretical boundary goes this way for 25 miles. Cocaine, meth, heroin, fentanyl comes through this area. This is what Trump is talking about. I'm a fifth generation Arizona rancher. I have a ranch, 50,000 acres, and it extends down to the international boundary. You're a pretty fired up guy about this. I mean, this is something that has been angering you for a while. I'm angry. The United States government should secure the border, should keep the druggers from coming across my land. I'm sure there are hundreds and thousands of drug packers coming in through the Tucson sector. And uh, my ranch is a big part of the Tucson sector. For 10 years, I've advocated the need for a wall. I like to take my friends down there and show them what the international four-strand barbed wire cattle fence looks like and how the Sinaloa cartel essentially has control of our whole area. The illegals can come along and open the gate. Well, this is a major drug pass right through here. And there are cartel scouts in Mexico 
They know we're here. They're watching us. What do you think that they don't know about the international boundary before they go and see it? It's hard to perceive what it really looks like. Any rational person can see the situation and come to the same conclusion I've come to. Mocha Jasper Johnson, I'm with Athens Anti-Discrimination Movement, and we're offering free rides to the polls. If you haven't voted yet and you want to get a ride to the polls, we can do it today or on November 6th. Have you voted yet? No, ma'am. Are you registered to vote? Yeah, ma'am. This is a very close race. It's an historical Georgia race. These are all the things that are going to be on the ballot. Hello, how you doing? We're offering free rides to the polls. Have you voted? Yes, I have. Oh, good. Can I did it by, um, by mail. Can I get a high five? Thank you, you so much. That's You're right. Welcome. There you go. All right. <laughs> we live in a small town called Athens, Georgia. And basically, an incident happened downtown. There was a, a particular bar downtown that was bold enough to, to publish a drink, send it to the printer, and the drink was called Niggerita. Niggerita! I'm thinking in my mind, somebody's going to do something. He's going to be fine. His business is going to close down. But nothing happened. And I was like, no. Nah. I don't know, I just jumped into activism. It does seem like race has become a big issue mm -hmm. in the governor's race. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's because Donald Trump created this atmosphere where it's, it's caused these problems? I think these problems already existed. I feel like right now what he has done is just added more fuel to the fire. So you're about to go vote. I am about to go vote. <laughs> How's that feel? It feels really good. A few years ago, I was not involved in the political process. I'm a new activist. The first time I ever voted was the Obama campaign, mm -hmm. okay, to be truthful. And then after the Obama campaign, I didn't, I wasn't engaged or involved on a local level or on a state level. I have more of an understanding on how important it is to vote, how my voice does matter, and how we can make a difference. And these are things that I actually didn't believe in a few years ago. Um, it seems like there's a line, honey. Wow, no. I actually think there's a long line. If a large number of minorities come out and vote, it will change who is in office, and that's what they're afraid of. I'm a high school social studies teacher. I've been teaching here in Tulsa for 20 years. I uh, used to think I could just stay in my classroom and that was my kingdom and that was fine. One of the interesting things about American politics is we're most familiar with the politicians who are most distant from us. Yeah, it's frustrating. My wife is a teacher too, so we struggle on our teacher incomes. Who, for example, is your school board representative? Dun, dun, dun. I didn't get into education to get rich, but I didn't get into it to become poor either. We traditionally have held second and third jobs. I've given that up to be a candidate. Budget issues, education issues, they're not new here in Oklahoma. And teachers have run before in the past. Does this here feel different? Absolutely, it feels different. So uh, teachers ran as individuals in the past. Today, they're running as an organized force, an army. There are 48 state senators. They've got districts all over Oklahoma. You live in State Senate District 39. People say they're not into politics, but then politics happens to them. Do you feel like politics happened to you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the fact that I went 10 years without a raise, that was a political choice. The fact that I have 33 darling 14-year-olds crowded together in one classroom, that's a political outcome. The fact that a kid opened up her used grammar textbook and had Blake Shelton's name in it, that was a political outcome. Good class, everybody. Remember to read over these ballot questions. We'll talk about those and your fake news articles tomorrow. Is any part of you like, man, I might have to leave my classroom? That's the heartbreak of it all, is that uh, Oklahoma teachers are not allowed to serve in the public schools and in the legislature at the same time. But my favorite book is The Lord of the Rings, and you have to know that Frodo had to leave the Shire to save the Shire. So this is my, uh, this is my Lord of the Rings. Uh. Hi! I'm going around with my friend here, Luke. We're talking about healthcare. Yeah. 
The gist is that it's not only going to help 62,000 Idahoans get health care, it's going to bring back 400 million of our federal right. tax dollars to do it. So right. it's a pretty fiscally responsible and morally responsible way to, to help folks. And very, very necessary for the state. Yes. Do you mind me asking if you're conservative or liberal? I'm conservative. And, and, you, and you're going to vote yes on Proposition 2? I'm going to vote yes on Proposition 2. I'm all for a bipartisan working together program. And if somebody's going to support that, I don't care which side they're on, I will support them. So I, I vote my conscience, not my party. Is your party working for you right now? Some of them are and some of them aren't. And I don't want to get too specific because I live with a staunch conservative, so. Your husband? Yes. <laughs> Can I talk to him too? No. Come on. <laughs> Bring him over no, here. I, I really would rather you didn't. He's very tired right now, and he might say a few things you'd have to bleep out. So. I'm a design engineer. I design products for companies. Bit of a mad scientist. So this is a project we actually just finished. What are sort of some of the arguments against Proposition 2? We've got a system that has such perverse incentives now that everybody is getting rich off health care except the people who, who are yeah. paying for it. Yeah. Right, okay. okay? It's just that so much money is being wasted on things that aren't health care. You know, that there's this huge administrative burden that has to be taken care of. So, you know, if, if we're going to fix something, let's fix that. It basically is an expansion of Obamacare and it's a step towards single-payer health care. It's expanding a system which is already broken. As we add more people onto it, more basically healthy people, I think people don't know it's Obamacare. Yet. Okay. I think if you actually sit down and say, should we expand Obamacare in Idaho? Which is what's on the ballot right now. I know, okay. but that's not how it's been marketed. And if you tell them, that's what I want to do, you're probably going to get 60 or 70% of the people say, no, I don't want to do that. So you knock on my door, you tell me about Proposition 2, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then I ask you, is that part of Obamacare? What's your response? I straight up go to like, well, so with the Affordable Care Act <laughs> passed, <laughs> so I pretty quickly shift to like, when the Affordable Care Act passed, and I talk about like, just how this law exists and like how the coverage gap exists and kind of the lunacy of that. I got two life and made this guy three three until end of turn. So why did I lose three? You two, if I'm not mistaken, work second jobs or have worked second jobs. I've yeah. taught at Tulsa Community College. I've run lecture series. I've um, AP grading. I've gone. I've taught at uh, other uh, community colleges around, uh, mostly teaching. Would it be hard to sustain yourselves just on oh, your yeah. teacher salary? Yeah, we, we'd be underwater every month. It's, it's really hard to build wealth in a two-teacher household, and it's really hard to get by. And then when if a disaster happens, well, then you're wiped out. You experience it at school? We have to be really careful with all the stuff there, like pencils, because our teachers um, can't afford to buy new ones. Because your teachers are buying the pencils? Yeah, and I know what it's like not having very much money in your family because your parents or teachers they don't get paid too um, very much either. What sort of sacrifices have you had to make, I mean, all of you, yeah. for this campaign? Krista has to be a single parent sometimes. Uh, yeah, and just all kinds of... Part of my commitment has been to keeping some normalcy here, mm -hmm. trying to cook a healthy meal several times a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just trying to keep all the wheels on the bus. Yeah. Have you guys ever thought about leaving? Yeah, yeah. yeah we have. Yeah. I think everybody does. I mean, I think that the politicians have put us in a terrible position where we have to make these choices between, you know, the community we love and what's best for our family. What's at stake for you in this election? If the Democrats take the House of Representatives, it's going to be very hard for President Trump to get appropriations to build the wall he's promised. Have you ever found yourself questioning your position at all when you hear other people talk? No, <laughs> I live here. I know what I'm talking about. They're full of bullshit usually. I have three motion activated cameras and here are some drug cartel scouts. So some of these videos show people that you think are part of the drug cartel 
and some show people that you've said are just immigrants trying to cross in to the United States. Yes. Now, that guy's probably an illegal immigrant. He doesn't know where he is. At one time, when the human wave out of Mexico came through, I estimated 30 to 40,000 people walking through my ranch. The Washington, D.C. attitude is, let the people walk through their ranches. They don't understand the border. They don't understand the issues. Yet they pontificate all the time about how smart they are and their theory of the border. When they see it, they change their minds. Some of this rhetoric that we hear now, people just say, hey, that sounds pretty racist to me. This sounds like a bunch of racists. And they just kind of turn off. Racism has nothing to do with it. We need immigrants. I love immigrants. Uh, I love the Hispanic culture. But uh, everything should be legal. How has it made you feel to watch this election? What do you think of it? It's a fight between the open borders people and the people who want to secure the border. You really believe that Democrats want open borders? I've never seen a single Democrat call for an open border. You're wrong. You haven't, you haven't watched the news and, and uh, listened to essentially what they say. Do you think Brian Kemp is purposely trying to disenfranchise black voters? I mean, I would say his office, I, the secretary of state, I, I can't say him directly, but something ain't right. Now, I don't know a lot about politics, but as a secretary of state, I think you should have stepped down when you decide to run for governor so there wouldn't be a, I think there's a conflict of interest. So you're saying Donald Trump has created this atmosphere where there's hate, like it's almost normalized hate. So I wanted to hear sort of your thoughts on this. This is the magical Negro, Oprah Winfrey, asking you to make my fellow Negress, Stacey Abrams, the governor of Georgia. Wow. I'm not surprised by it. With Donald Trump as our new president, now you see these people out there that think that's okay. There are over 50 teachers, if I'm not mistaken, running for office in Oklahoma. Why are so many teachers running for office? Well, you know what? We are sick and tired of being put behind. We are sick and tired of being last on the list. The teacher walkout woke us up and it said, hey, let's get up and do something about it. Why are teachers leading the way? Because teachers see it all. When a kid goes to school hungry, teachers see it. When families have to choose between medical care or food or rent because we haven't raised the minimum wage in 10 years, well, Teachers see it! And when politicians tell us to get another job or to shut up and teach, well, we see that too. And you know what? We're not going to take it anymore! They will learn a powerful lesson on Election Day. And they will learn it from teachers! Shalom! and see you on election day. I've taken McSally and Kirsten Cinema down to the border. The feeling that I get is, is that McSally is dedicated to building the wall. Uh, Kristen, eh, maybe not. Who are you most excited to vote for? I'm really excited to vote for McSally. And I'm so excited my socks are rolling up and down. How confident are you this is actually gonna end up working out for you? And we're gonna drive down there one day and we're gonna see you all. It depends on the composition of Congress. He's gotta have the money to do it. I'll give him time. If he doesn't do it, I'll be very angry. I'll go upstairs. We have knocked on over 400 doors. I would say 70 to 80% have either voted, they're going to vote, so that's good, and we're reminding people. So you ain't gonna vote? Vote for what? Is it gonna change in the things for me? It could. It won't, it never have. How y'all doing? Y'all voted already? Anybody yes, need I voted yesterday. You voted yesterday? Yes. Yay! I've been telling everybody, I ain't never seen so many black folks. 
devoted to this. Young black folks, too. <laughs> We're about to take her. <laughs> okay. Come on, Andre. <laughs> okay. Do you understand if you don't vote what that means? We, we believe that Our it doesn't. doesn't yes, yeah, so we can't complain about our situation. It is both rewarding when I vote, and it's also rewarding when I get other people to vote. I'm excited. <laughs> and to think, I almost didn't do it. Girl, I'm gonna tell everybody, you just put the sticker on right here and, mm, and you just um, rock it for the rest of the day. That's what's so up. It. How do you feel about your chances right now? Whatever happens, you gotta respect the verdict of the voters because that's democracy. But I like my chances. Have you thought about whether maybe you have more of an impact on the place you live when you're a teacher than, than you would as a state legislator? That's a good question. Yeah, maybe. It may be that I'll just be a voice in the wilderness in Oklahoma City. But if we don't have people fighting for those teachers and those kids and those people in the legislature, if we just focus on our classroom and not on the larger world, well, then the whole thing comes apart. If this passes, will it be because you successfully made it a nonpartisan issue? I mean, yeah. <laughs> if, it, I, if it passes, it will be because people are good. It will be because people in Idaho care more about the well-being of their neighbors than any of this partisan bullshit.